Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hi there, welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We are talking the critters of Hopkinton and family today <laughs> with our friend Anne Michelle Dragsback, who's not new to the couch of Hopkinton Coffee Break. No. <laughs> our marathon runner, one of, one of many in town. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. Good, good, good. So you are our very first guest, you were saying, Darlene, that yeah, we've ever had. Yeah, it was um, Jean Van Buka and, and stuff. It was because the year, the year before in the marathon was the disaster. Right. And, um, and, and Jeannie were able to, sh they were actually both running for Project S because, but they were able to share different perspectives of a story. One who had just crossed the finish line and one who didn't make, yeah. quite make over the finish line and what happened and everything else. And, um, yeah. But we Back again. again. So and you ran fresh. again this year. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So this was, this you said, the 11th. 11th and the 11th. you're still gearing to do still another one. Still going to do another one. Good. Still got it in me. Got it. So, so we were talking <laughs> about, good. just before we, we uh, came on air, we were talking about Hopkinton Critters and you're a runner and you're running through the woods and seeing all kinds of things. And if anybody's been paying attention to what's going on in Hopkinton, we've seen some pretty interesting critters this year with the caterpillar infestation they're disgusting they're just absolutely <laughs> disgusting people are hating that <laughs> oh god you know yeah they've been eating the trees and all that the and uh spiders and snakes but our most famous one recently the none of us have seen it though no really none of us here, sitting here none of us sitting yeah, here. yeah yeah i want to see it but i'm not oh. going to go out there and look for it it's like i'm well, going to see the baby looking see for it. it looking left and looking right uh, yeah <laughs> 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 or anything else. Oh, I Actually, know. Katie and um, Johnny went looking for it the other night. That's so funny. They didn't find it, but they went looking for it. And That's the so it, funny. in case, you know, is the, uh, obviously black the, bear. the black bear. So Absolutely. Yeah. But you know, it's also funny on the, on the Facebook page, the thread about the critters in swimming pools. Oh, yeah. And I, I had no that. idea. Yes, you were <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right. Killed them. I killed know, them. So, yeah, that's all I want. Just right. kill them. I, there's, I, there's no, I had no idea that, that was... I don't care if they crawl every, and they slam across the ground and kill them. Every day you'd go <laughs> out, and I swear, every season, there seemed to be a particular abundance of... Some years it was a bunch of chipmunks, some years it was the frog invasion, some years it was whatever, but... And, of course, every year there'd be one giant... And I'm not kidding. But what? Spider. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, which one? Right? I had turtles, <laughs> frogs. <I've> turtles. <laughs> so are you <laughs> pulling them out of your um, trap this year too? Yeah, right? they're in the skimmer. What is it, baby daily? turtles. Yeah. Baby snapping turtles that like the size of a quarter. Oh. Yeah. So it's a daily thing when you're cleaning yeah. the pool that you're pulling something out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, you have four kids. They could clean it for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't do it. If I open and see something, I close <laughs> I it back up. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and then running to the woods. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. But anyway, um, family. You're family, and you've been on the show before, but you're here for a different reason. But yeah. let's refresh. So, for those that didn't see the other show, you lived in town my whole yep. life. Right. Her parents were high school sweethearts. Uh, mm -hmm. Wow. And Started a business in town. And her grandparents for many, yeah. many grew up years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 26 years. As a stylist, and then many of us have gone, and you yeah. know, you've, you've yeah. quaffed many a head in Hopkinton <laughs> yeah. and around. Absolutely. Yeah. There's okay. secrets you can tell your hairdresser, too. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. The same oh, thing yeah. I hope. <laughs> yes. We <laughs> hope. <laughs> I, I think more people share in the, like, the hairdresser chair than they do in, like, the therapist it's therapy. therapy. That was, that was yeah. more in the confessional of the priest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's right up there. Wow. It's right up there. Yeah. So you so later have, on, come tell us dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so how many how many kids do you have? Because I, I have four was kids. trying to remember. I was thinking two or three, but four. Four. Wow. So give us the give us the rundown. Tell how, what age is everybody? So in? Maddie's twenty. She's okay. living in going to school in New York. Ah. Mm -hmm. Cole is um, eighteen. He just graduated. Oh, He's congrats. going to the University of Kentucky, so oh, he'll be far oh, away. Oh, I'm from Cincinnati, so that's oh, yeah, really? yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I remember seeing your pictures as you were touring the school or yeah. deciding on it. I'm like, wow, that's, it is beautiful. That was yeah. his first choice? Yeah. Wow. First and only choice. He only applied there. Why? Oh, my God. Why? Yeah. Why university? How did he know about it? When he he started him? looking at it when he was, like, in junior high because he loved the sport teams. Oh, he, he was, like, oh. a super fan of the basketball team. So one year for Christmas, I bought him tickets to see a Kentucky Wildcats game. 
Yeah. And then went out with my husband, and they toured the campus when they were there, and he just said, that's where I'm going. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. That's so great. I'm glad it's it got in. But it's been gotten in. You don't have to do it. You can't you can't got it. That would have been intentions. good. Yeah. yeah. So Morgan is 16, and she's going to be a junior in mm -hmm. Hopkinton, and my youngest, Luke, is 11. Wow. Oh, very oh, good. Very he's good. Going kids are growing. He's going into seventh grade. Seventh grade. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So... Well, indeed. So, so I know part of the reason to, um, that I reached out to have you on, and we've known each other many, many years, is um, that this, this month is Pride Month. Mm -hmm. So to share more of your story with Pride Month and your connections now and what you're, what you're advocating for. Okay. Right. So that's pretty easy. I'm used to talking about Luke. So um, I do trainings with the um, Department of Secondary Education, the Safe Schools Program. Mm -hmm. So I go into schools and do training on how to best support LGBTQ students, especially trans students, because mm -hmm. um, that's where there's a lot of support needed now. Mm -hmm. What does the Q stand for? Queer or questioning. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, uh, and, and just for those who don't know, Pride Month is a recognition of, of LD, LGBTQ um, in, interests, and there's been lots of celebrations, lots of parades, and mm -hmm. so how's that feeling? I mean, in terms of that support or this, you know, sort of, um, it feels like a general acceptance, but I know that it, some things on the outside are not always. Yeah, it, it's, not really it feels it. great to see okay. it. it. It feels great to see more support, but um, it's a tough road and it's not a life that I would ever choose for one of my kids. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm always going to have to be advocating for him and he's always going to be struggling somewhat for mm -hmm. acceptance, mm -hmm. but he, he just has a conviction about him. He mm -hmm. just knows who he is and um, he'll be fine. But, but and he seems to always have. Yeah. yeah. Your support though is amazing. Yeah, well, and, and I think that's makes a difference, probably, right? Uh, to have that, um, and to have always had that, is, is that so unconditional important. love, right? Yeah. But that's a journey for parents, obviously. So yeah, that's always like the first thing that people ask me, like you know, how did you know that he was transgender? And for a long time, we didn't know. I mean, we thought he was a tomboy. That's what mm -hmm. everyone would think. We didn't know anyone who was transgender. We didn't know what it meant to be transgender. But when when Luke was little, he he did things that tomboys wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. um, when he was a toddler, he liked boy things, but my other girls did too, so I, we didn't think too much yeah. of it. Right. But when he was playing with little people, he would always play with only the boys, but he would separate all the girl figures out of everything. Mm -hmm. When he played dress up, he was always the dad. Mm -hmm. um, he was always the male figure in everything. Um, when he was about four years old, he started his second year of um, preschool. And when he came home, he said, Mom, boys don't dress like this. And mm -hmm. I said, well, you're not a boy. Oh, yeah, yes, I am a boy. And that's how it always was with him. He mm -hmm. never said, I want to be a boy. He said, I am a boy. Okay. So I never, like, really cared about the dressing part. Like, mm -hmm. if he, he wanted boy clothes, whatever. I just Thank was you. like, you can wear boy clothes. You can have a boy room, but you can't cut your hair because I love your hair. And you know, and you, you and you're in hairdressing. You saw how I dressed. <laughs> you saw how I dressed my yeah. kids. They were all sparkles and glitter. And he was just came over from school like, what is he this? Was jam. <laughs> and so jam shorts in the tanks all the time. Right. Even and, at the beach and stuff. And he was comfortable with that for a while, but his behavior was insistent, consistent, and persistent. Mm. It was day in and day out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a phase. Phases mm -hmm. go away mm -hmm. over time. Right. This got stronger over time. Okay. So when he was younger, he was content to play with boys and play with boy things and dress like a boy. But as he got older, he started saying things to me that were alarming. Mm -hmm. When he was six years old, he asked me um, if, if he died, if he could come back as a boy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that scared me. Yeah. yeah. That and shortly after that, he told me, Mom, I just look like a girl on the outside, but I'm really a boy on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what better way for a six-year-old right. to describe their internal struggle? Because yeah. he didn't have a word for what he was. Right. He didn't right. know what it meant to be transgender. So after that, I bought a book called The Transgender Child. Mm -hmm. And I was floored. I like read the whole book in one day, and I'm like, this is my kid. Like, mm -hmm. I, I wow. just couldn't I even believe it. Yeah. So I like 
showed my family, I showed my husband and my parents, and they were not on board. They were just oh, like, sure. you are making way too much of this. It's mm -hmm. just a phase. It's just yeah. a phase. He, you know, she's a tomboy. Mm -hmm. Just let her be a kid. And so I kind of went back and forth. Like, when they would say stuff like that, I had my doubts. Right. Um, but I still kept educating myself and reading and, you know, talking to him and, um, it was about two weeks before his first communion that mm -hmm. it, it really like hit home with everybody because he came to me two weeks before sobbing. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm really, really scared to receive my first communion. And I said, well, what are you scared of? And he said, please don't make me wear that dress. Mm -hmm. And he just cried, mm -hmm. like, please don't make me wear that dress. Mm -hmm. It had been hanging in his closet. His mm -hmm. sister wore it. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, what am I doing? What's the big deal? Right. So I went out and bought him a suit. Mm -hmm. And when I came home with that suit, he was so happy. He put it on. He didn't mm -hmm. take it off. For, for a year, he wore it everywhere. He wore it to Target, he wore it out to dinner, he wore it everywhere. Awesome. And the day of the First Communion, he was so excited and so proud, and mm -hmm. he just went, ran ahead of us up the steps, and we were all like cringing, like, oh my God, what is everybody gonna think? Yeah, yeah. Sure. and, that's, and the that, that's the hard part. That's the hard part. Others are gonna right. think. But you know your child is and happy. And he was not embarrassed at all. Mm -hmm. He just, it was more important to him to be true to, to, be true mm -hmm. to himself than mm -hmm. to make other people right. happy, to live right. to their expectations yes. of what they thought he should dress like right. and look like. Right. He and, and my parents were just like, oh, you know what, you're right. They I, got it then. They, they got it. it. It was that moment when he <laughs> ran up the steps of the church that they were like, you're right. Wow. So it was then that I started having conversations with doctors and therapists and and they all told me to just follow his lead. And mm -hmm. he, they said, if he seems happy, just do what you're doing. So mm -hmm. that's what I did until about third grade. And third grade was horrible. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember a few, and that's just probably about that, it was a few summers ago. Yeah, it's when it, was it all kind of started. Like the breaking point, um, you were up in Maine and stuff like that. And um, I, I don't know if I talked to you or something, but that was the day that you were getting his haircut. Mm -hmm. ah. And that, that seemed to be the whole that, turning. That was the turning point. So we had been having a serious conversation one day, and he was telling me that when he grew up, he was going to be just like me, and he was going to have four kids, mm -hmm. but he was going to be the dad. Okay. And I said, you know, that's great. You know, mm -hmm. you, know you, you can do that. And, and I said, but, you know, you've been telling me since you were a little kid that you felt like you were a boy inside. So how come you never asked me to cut your hair? Mm. And he looked at me and he said, because you love my hair and I don't want to make you sad. Oh. So mm. my happiness was more important than his. Than his. Mm -hmm. And all along, I thought that I had been his biggest advocate. Mm. And yes. here I was still holding on to something because I knew that once I cut his hair, mm -hmm. that it was going to be a game changer yeah. because yeah. Society accepts tomboys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they sure do. So right. we flew under the radar for right. a lot yeah. of years. Right. People in town did not know the in internal struggle that our family was of having. So. Right. Right. so once I cut his hair, I knew it was go time. Yeah. So I, his hair was so beautiful too. <laughs> it was. <So> beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought a picture. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me put this into perspective. My daughter has beautiful, beautiful red hair. Mm -hmm. When she was 16, I, or no, she had just graduated, so 18, she was like a freshman in college. She had long hair. Yeah, his was long. Dyed blonde. His was blonde and so, curly. No, but she had <laughs> natural, beautiful red hair. And, and she, she dyed, dyed it blonde. blonde. Oh, so, like, yeah. and, and so, I understand. so you know how that I'm feels. I'm complaining. Yeah. Yeah. You know this but was a little bit it, more, but it, it, it does that to someone else in the community. No, <laughs> I know. No, no, no. But, but I'm just saying, I understand I mean, this beautiful hair. Yeah. When your baby but it's has like, beautiful it's not hair. Oh, it was so this pretty. This is her. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, then I had to say it wasn't about me. It was about him. It wasn't about me and my love of his hair. He had the hair I always wanted, but whatever. But and, I could, and it was a drastic cut. It was a drastic cut. Yeah. I could not bring myself to do it because he didn't right. want shorter hair. He wanted it buzzed off. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have a friend that owns a hair salon in Maine where mm -hmm. we have a house. So I asked her if she would do it. And mm -hmm. 
oh my god the haircut completely liberated him mm. she buzzed the sides of it you know spiked up the top mm -hmm. he left there and nobody ever thought he was a girl ever again wow and right. we we went right to the beach and he met some boys and they were playing wiffle ball he was having a blast i was mm -hmm. sitting on my towel watching him he ran back over after about an hour and said um mom I just told everybody that my name was Luke, so call me that now, okay? Wow. And I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> okay. so where did the name come from? I think it was from a Disney show, because I oh. asked him that afterwards. I just was glad it wasn't something, something else. Something crazy. Because it, it very easily could have been, because before that, he was Joe, mm -hmm. John, Axel. He had like oh, he a had whole a list of names oh, that we would call him okay. over the years. So he, he settled on Luke and... Mm -hmm. That was that was a little bit hard at first because we had to it was really hard to remember to like call him by the right names and right. pronouns and i confused everybody his original name oh, could have, have gone either, either way, way. So yeah like, you know his, his birth original name? his birth name was skylar and okay. i loved that yeah, name yeah. and i tried to tell him it was Just either or right. but he wanted nothing to do with it, that it, name uh, to uh, him it's the cut. worst uh, yeah. swear word you've ever heard he doesn't right. want anyone calling him that name okay. it's um it's a dead name okay. and that's Mm. That's a big thing in the trans community. Yeah. Mm. They don't want to be called their birth name. And mm -hmm. that's so did he change his middle name too? Yes, and I wanted him to keep Skylar as the middle name, but he didn't want to do that either. And I respect his reasons right. for not wanting to do it, but his mm -hmm. middle name was my grandmother's um, middle name. So I told him he had to pick his, one of his grandfather's mm. Mm -hmm. that's cool. names oh, nice. for a middle name. So he, he picked Joseph. Wow. So you got Baba. Yeah, so, um, well, Joseph was my dad's uh, father, so. So Luke is 11 years old and 11 going old. into what grade? Seventh grade. Or he, well, school's still in, right? So yeah. he's in sixth grade. Yep. Yeah, okay. So, so third he, grade was horrible. Third grade was horrible because he didn't have any friends. I think for a long time, um, the boys accepted him as the tomboy Skyler, mm -hmm. but once he started... Um, Really I don't know. entering their world, right? And it <laughs> was an equal. exactly, mm -hmm. and it wasn't happening. They mm -hmm. were very, very uncomfortable around him. So he didn't fit in with the boys. He didn't fit in with the girls. Even with the haircut, I mean, um, yeah, this yeah. was even before the haircut. Oh, sure. he, and he just, mm -hmm. you know, he even before the haircut, he looked like a boy. Mm -hmm. He carried himself like a boy, mm -hmm. and it was only the hair. The right. hair was the only thing that made him look like a girl. And he would start wearing like hoodies and zipping them all the way up and tucking the right. hair in, so you could only see his mm -hmm. face. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would always. Think about like the pictures you'd post up from um, like Disney and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, you know he'd be in these jam clothes. Yeah, <laughs> always, <laughs> always jumping in the front. <laughs> always, he still does that. So um, once things started taking the turn, um, we we decided you know that was the summer of third grade that we cut his hair. And he thought that once he started school that everyone would see, oh, I'm, a, I'm a boy mm -hmm. now and I'm cool and mm -hmm. yeah. that's just it, but that's really not how it worked. But um, we, didn't, we didn't really know how to best support him at that time. We mm -hmm. didn't know we were allowed to change his name. We didn't okay. know what we were supposed to do really. So when we started fourth grade, we didn't tell anybody anything. We just sent him on the bus looking like a boy and we confused everybody. Okay. Um, the first couple of weeks of school were awful. Um, the teacher thought that somebody made a mistake on the attendance thing sure. and that it was a boy and it said it, it, he was a girl. So um, this, the other students kept saying, you know, that's a girl, that's really a girl. And he was hoping that she would you know, just think like, he was a boy. Right. He never wanted to be known as the trans boy. Right. He would just he just wanted to be a boy. He just mm -hmm. And and that that was really hard for him. I think that was the hardest thing that, you know, I had to say, Luke, you've gone to school here since you were three years old mm -hmm. and everybody knows you. So it's gonna be hard to be stealth and fly under the radar. So the next best thing we can do is just to try to fight for you. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna go at it. So right. And engage the school. Were they helpful? So they were very the helpful. Yes, I um, I called Children's Hospital mm -hmm. in Boston for some advice, and they gave me the name of the advocate that I worked with with the Department of Secondary Education. Okay. And I, when I called him, it was like, oh my 
God, life changing. Oh. So he came into the school with me, mm -hmm. and the school was great. Right away, they said we've never dealt with this before, so mm -hmm. we're going to follow your your lead. Mm -hmm. And okay. I was like, Well, was that's that more because great. at that grade level? Because I know, like in high school, there were a couple. Right, like, there was a transgender. He yeah. he was the youngest. I yeah, think it was never young. dealt with. It was only dealt with in the high school. It right. wasn't dealt with in the, the younger lower grades. Grade. Yeah. And I think that when it was dealt with, it was done very quietly. Like I've been kind of like shouting my story from the rooftop. Which so. is good. I mean, I think so, it's become a very proactive advocate. Yeah, and it and I and think and others. I hope to help other people because you know when I first went through this. I was really afraid because I felt like I was the only person in the world. Uh -huh. I felt like sure. oh, of course I didn't have right. anybody. So once I, you it's know, a, went into the school, a role model I mean, um, gay and lesbian is a small percentage, but as you get into bi and and trans, um, well, the awareness is small, but it, it's it, growing. Well, but, oh, true, but I'm just saying as a percent of the population, yeah. Yeah. trans is like the the, the smallest. So. You were the right. only one in the world as right. far as your world goes. It, it, true, but now I time. know that there are hundreds. See, I, I we have if it's the smallest. I wonder, you know, it's, I, it's not as small as people think it mm -hmm, is. I was mm -hmm. told then that it was less than one percent of the population. Mm -hmm. No, right. Oh right. my God, we it, Luke has friends all over Metro West. Mm. Through the Advocate, I've met okay. so many other moms and their mm -hmm. kids, and we we all have play dates. There's a camp for transgender and gender. Yeah non-conforming youth they're going to go for two weeks of overnight camp they can mm. just be boys they can do camp things without having to worry about mm -hmm. bathrooms or yeah any of I, that I, I think when mm. you were talking about the camp last year i think one of the things that was eye-opening for me was how the camp has to be kept so much private because i never realized the kids are in danger yeah and that and that you know that there is there isn't a lot of public sites to find the camp or things like that well, and so I, I, you know if you want to explain the, yeah explain you know, the in that? danger and you know the issues the concerns of yeah. because there's such a high rate of violence against the transgender community yeah. I, d mm -hmm. I don't even like to think about that the mm -hmm. fact that we have to keep the location hidden it, it, it just, um, it just that speaks for itself yeah it, mm -hmm. it was very very eye-opening for me when you told me that and I, I guess I've always been a fairly strong ally out there for people. I mean, because of the field I worked in was very gay and lesbian, um, and working for Billie Jean King, you, you you were around it all the time, and then you also saw sides of it where people really did get picked on within the sports world, mm -hmm. and these are people that you know are later on getting autographs, <laughs> yeah, but like in the locker room or having a hard time on things, or you know mm -hmm. getting outed by you know another athlete, <coughs> and then just. So it always just seemed part of like a normal life to me that this is just what happens. And then when you were telling me that, I was like, whoa. It was just, it, it just, it and it, as a parent, it's terrifying. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, understand. And I understand. And now transitioning through middle school, how's that been into? It's it, middle school has definitely been tougher. And I think that middle school is hor horrible for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just the age of the kids. They're still really immature. And I think that, um, you know, when Luke was younger, like l younger kids don't really didn't really think too much about the transition. But I think that they're revisiting it a lot now, and they're kind of testing their boundaries with him, and sure. you know, using the birth name or you know, telling him that he's he's not a real boy, so he's not going to be as strong, or he mm. won't be as good in sports. Mm. And didn't he just like win the championship for baseball? By <laughs> yeah, the way, they did. <laughs> yes, his team did. Tell us more about Luke's interest in school. He he plays hockey. He oh, loves okay. hockey, so that's. A well, long so season. Her husband. That's like nine months. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's the coach. Mm -hmm. So that's like <laughs> nine months out of the year. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. So um, the winter, the fall, and the winter is mostly hockey. But he just played little league baseball okay. on the quad A Red Sox, and they won the championship. Yay! So oh, he wow. was very excited to get that, that trophy. Great. Wow, yeah. that is great. So that was our goal. He just <laughs> wanted to fit in. With so the, yeah, tell me yeah. about this. What's this? Okay, so Nexus is. Um, a program for the LGBT middle school mm -hmm. um, people. It's founded by Out Metro West. And we'll have this on, we'll have this posted. Yeah, Mike already has. They mm -hmm. meet in um, the second Wednesday of every month in Framingham, mm -hmm. and family members are welcome to come at a separate 
um, PFLAG meeting in the same okay. location. Great. So this is really great because when Luke was transitioning, I called out Metro West. They were one of the first people that I called. Mm -hmm. And at the time, they didn't have a program like this. They had a program for high school age kids, uh -huh. but nothing for middle school, never mind elementary. So yeah. here, uh -huh. Luke was nine and I was you know, four years away from them having a program yeah. that would ac accommodate us. So this is huge. So, you know, it's, it's really a blessing in disguise. I mean, I'm sure at the time it didn't feel, feel like that it. way. Yeah. But, you know, Luke being a pioneer and your yeah. family, and really, if without him entering into this in a lower grade, you know, he's and not the only one. And right. And so it really helps to break that ice, be that be that uh, role model. Right. And you, you know, what a blessing you have been oh, as his you. mother in general, anyway, with all your kids. But to be a supportive and love him through all of this. Yeah. He's yeah, great. Good stuff. He's a great kid. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and, and it's a, it's definitely been a journey mm -hmm. right, for you. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Yeah, it's changed me. It's really changed me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, had I not been given this child, mm -hmm. that maybe I, 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 not maybe, I wouldn't be the advocate I am today. Because I think sometimes when things don't affect you personally, it's easy to kind of turn the other oh, cheek. I, and, and, and it's sometimes hard to uh, personally, um, the, the word I'm not looking for is comprehend, but, but there's a, a level of um, attempting to accept, but mm -hmm. understanding that you don't always understand. Yeah. Um, you know, my daughter is, is bi, and there are times I'll say things and she'll just be like, ah, you know, you have no clue. Right. And I'm like, you're right, I don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't. I love you and, and I accept you, but you know, right. you're right. And, and I just care, are you in a healthy and happy relationship? And, and Absolutely. you know, are you doing what you want to do with your life? But well, the diversity lens—we're all looking through it from different angles, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you know, we see more and more support. Uh, certainly, Pride Month uh, parades um, here in town. There's also the Youth Commission doing things. I'm sure you're mm -hmm. very aware of it. Uh, She's been the very outspoken. Cultural and Alliance. In fact, they're the having diversity. some sort of play group, diverse play group. Now, Luke may be too old for that. I'm not sure what the grade. Uh, uh, level is, but bringing diverse kids um, together. together to yeah, play and do some great. kayaking at the state park. So, mm -hmm. fun things. It has it's been a pleasure wow. having <laughs> you on. Thank it's been you. fun this year. We always go another other fun <laughs> stuff to talk <laughs> about. Part part I know. Too, so. We could talk forever. Yeah. 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 Have Thank you. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, Thank for being you. on. We'll see ya. Possibility. It starts early, before we even know what it is. Thanks to people who make it happen. Together, we are possibility. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.